This is the end of the modeling, iron modeling contest. You have people bringing in trade and their entries up, doing a short speech about it. So these are usually kind of funny, kind of entertaining. Let's see what happens. I try to get a bit closer. That's where the fun starts. Hey, Tony. Hey. Get a picture, man. I'm oh, sorry? Get a picture. That's right. I'm videotaping. Forget about the picture. I'm going to full. Cheers, man. Thank you. You too. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming. Welcome to the uh, final part of Iron Modeler. I think 19, uh, maybe it's 18. There was a pandemic and we all lost track of whatever time was going on. So, this year, we have 11 teams, three people each. We started with 2,500 scale discovery. Okay. Forces, you had to use 75% of this kit. Okay. And whatever crapola you found on this table here. Okay. And this is metric ton of crapola. Let me just bring up. <laughs> you know who you are. Okay, two hours in because we're mean people. We gave the contestants a sprue, one sprue, a random sprue out of this. Okay, there's one sprue, and you'll see. And you screwed them. Yes, So, four hours, some tomfoolery, paints and airbrushes, courtesy of Tom Grossman, tag team of Contestants are going to come up and explain in just a moment. First, I would like to, because you know we all need to get judged, I am going to introduce our distinguished panel of celebrity judges. So, Ray Sam Irvin. in the universe and got tangled up in a rather unsavory business of making edibles. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he decided it was a good idea to come back to the family roost and hide out from various illegals. And uh, in the process, Dad said, that's great, that's what we should do, join the family business. So he took it upon himself, once Dad wasn't paying attention, to paint up the rather traditional utilitarian tongue and all kinds of interesting 
accoutrements and make it his own. And he has now transformed this into an edible delivery business anywhere in the I see a lot of paint on there, but a little blue. All right, big boxers, everyone. It's the year 2035, while the U.S. is strong space force, they have flown behind on land, so just <laughs> taking inspiration from top gamers and nerds, they helped design the next generation of ground vehicles. This is the Centaur. It was born and inspired by the mythical beast that was, has an upper body of a human and a body of a horse. They added some various features from the anime and sci-fi work shows. The Centaur has become the top and uh, the line mobile power unit. It's got a protoplasm weapon, a cool spinning shield that will slice up its enemies, and a few tank cannons. This is why we make you type your entry. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, grumpy old modelers. Wait, that's everyone. <laughs> 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 This is the Space Jesus robot that we built. After entering a model contest with less experienced people, our team, our captain over here, went insane and became obsessed with building a perfect model. So he went out in the hallway, downloaded a program from the dark web to control all kinds of lights and stuff. The program turned out to be a transmission from a U.S. space probe that crashed into a space god, which caused the model to become self-aware. Now the model travels the universe trying to bring other models into being self-aware, I guess. <laughs> Team Big Dog, bring it Big Dog, bring it Go Big Dog. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Long live the nameless one! In dark earth he reigned. Blood we drink. His sword the many's bane. His ethereal in his causes one to think. His boundless forty overfloweth. In dark earth he sleeps. May his name be forgotten forever henceforth. To forget his name we, we drink. drink. <laughs> Forget yourself. Gather material wealth. Bury yourself in the earth. There's like oil. There's oil. There's oil. Something like that's great. There's bombs. There's bombs. Yeah. There's bombs. Yeah. yeah. Unblown up bombs. There's loads of them in the earth. So adopt the nameless one as your god today. <laughs> Discovery. And lo and behold, what are our friends do for us? They give us a discovery kit to use because it ended two days ago. Right? <laughs> so, if you followed along this year, you know that we're chasing the progenitors and we decided to stay on track. Now, let me go to the script and see how much I've done here. Disco has provided new and unique view of the Star Trek universe. This final season has celebrated the chase for humanity's origin, including a trip to the greatest place ever. Federation's Eternal Gallery and Archive. If you haven't seen that, watch it. It's amazing. Here tonight, we unveil for the first time ever the work of Jean-Luc Picard, Picard's Picasso. <laughs> Much like it is 800 years from now, the artwork will be. And this is either an internal study into the mind of Starfleet's finest captain, or that's how we all feel after watching this show. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> we present for card spinners. Oh, is that like a hundred five? Next up, EB Greenweeds, another new team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Full disclosure, this movie pitch was written by my son Taylor, who was to <laughs> chicken. <laughs> He's got a broken wing. Exactly. <laughs> okay, after the Second World War, oh, meteors fell to Earth and crash landed, and when it hatched, a robotic chicken came out and wreaked Kentucky Fried Havoc. <laughs> uh, the, the survivors fled Earth, and uh, this robot chicken flew after him and caught them and ate them all. Um, so we present Mecca Robo Chicken minus one. <laughs>
Okay, Rebel Scum, where are y'all at? Rebel Scum. We are no longer Team Rebel Scum, but we are Team Terrifyingly Regal Sophistication Enterprises. <laughs> for your kaiju elimination needs, one for the distinguished galactic leaders, we loudly and gleefully present the TRS X1. The X stands for exquisite excoriation, excellence in extirpation, expertly executed mass extinction. It also stands for extremely expensive. <laughs> the TRS X1 is for galactic leaders who need to make a statement. We have money, and you don't. Features <laughs> uh, include upper appendages reminiscent of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Less swinging means less collateral damage, less money rebuilding society after a kaiju attack, and more money spent on handsome frivolities. Like the TRS X1. Proton ray blasters with precision micron homing capabilities. One shot, one disintegration. <laughs> Even its visual acquisition sensor screams style and sophistication with a slick smile and sporty solar shades. TRS X1 is the pinnacle of precision, poise, power, and prestige. But let's be honest. Okay, family guy, two point zero. Wow, they're pretty young for this crowd. <laughs> 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 It's our story here. A family of three is stranded in a deserted land. The only thing standing between them and rescue is their lack of engineering know-how, total disregard of symmetry, and abundance of super glue. So, <laughs> I'm going to introduce the USS Glue Bomb. <laughs> Copyright defense went for if anyone wants 3D scans that's filled in the next five days, just let us know. So, and the big trick is if they don't pull up, it's real. Okay. Right. <laughs> Thank you, family guy. Last but certainly least, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> and very last. You've all heard space, the final frontier, right? Well, wrong. Death is the final frontier. <laughs> and the Necronauts are coming. The Necronauts. <laughs> Masters of the galaxy, and the first ship they encountered in their death machine, piloted by space mummy, Aaron <laughs> Raw, was the discovery. And they told the, the discovery crew, prepare to die. And the discovery crew, before they could react, had to talk about their feelings. <laughs> Which led the Necronauts to completely disassemble and use all of the parts for the Discovery as part of their flagship. Which, by the way, flies.